All right, thanks for staying with us. If you're just joining us, this is News Up. I'm sure we'll have a silver bar television, silver at News 24. We'll be crossing lanes right now uh, from Nigeria to uh, Ukraine uh, over the Ukraine-Russia uh, crisis that's happening. And we'll be getting an update on what's happening with uh, displaced Nigerian students uh, there or elsewhere in the world. And uh, this morning, instead of joining us virtually, which is our usual manner, she is live in Nigeria, blessing in Mubosa. Um, welcome. Welcome back home. Nice to see you. Nice Do I say spirit and in truth or live and direct? <laughs> Which of them am I going to take? Uh, it's great to see you uh, here. So just let's, let's, let's just start the conversation straight off. Give us an update. What has happened so far, you know, since the last time um, uh, we spoke about this issue? Well, a lot has happened. Uh, thank you for having me here. And it's a pleasure seeing you guys live, sure. no longer on Zoom. <laughs> It's a, it's a great pleasure to be back home in Nigeria and um, the purpose of coming back home was because of the cost. Uh, sometimes you see thousand things from afar but when you are in person it's easier to relate with the persons who you need help from and so uh, I think my presence was most needed and our organization has been growing and having new people, new volunteers who are willing to help, even students who are willing to say we want to be part of this, we want to also help. Um, it has been a very tough week for most of them, like we all know the Easter period just uh, passed and most of them didn't really enjoy their Easter that they would like they would. Um, even if um, the European parts when you're in Ukraine, they're an Orthodox, you know, and, and during the Orthodox uh, celebration, Easter is one of the major times where they go to church, you know, and that's why once in a year, apart from Easter and Christmas. And so this was a very heartbreaking moment where a lot had been going through so much. Uh, there a lot of human traffic here on the rise. Um, a lot of um, organs harvesting, a lot of rape cases. Um, most cities that the Russians have taken over, they say it's quite organized, quite calm. And they're trying to keep it more structured. And uh, we heard of stories where um, one of the cities who had this uh, nuclear weapon, a lot of the Russian armies were affected. Mm. Um, many of them started digging the, the grounds which were toxic unknown to them and there's this um, hallway which they got into they didn't know that it was a place where they contained a lot of toxic it related to chernobyl yes oh. lot, so so it has been more like um, i know the North russian government will want to really announce and say they are losing a lot but a lot mm -hmm. of them who went into ukraine had that problem in chernobyl and it was it was drastic um, and many of them fell sick many of them were tested for um, nuclear uh, diseases or poisons, like poisons. Yeah, yeah. exactly and uh, we also have students who are on the borders a lot of them are crossing to other places like you have cities like Sloviaska and um, Austria they, they don't give permanent residence for the student they are saying uh -uh, after your three months you're leaving we're not interested in giving you a stay even if you want to study here we are not part of it so but countries like Germany have been very friendly which is an impressive uh, Germany, Netherlands, Holland, a lot of uh, the, some of the European countries have been very welcoming to Africans. We've had young um, Nigerians who are be below 18 who have been given straight residency, wow. been taken care of by the government, they're giving money, they're giving food. Then those who are above are still trying to get themselves registered, but they're telling them, okay, we'll give you one year, but after then you have to go back to your country, or when the war's over, you go back to Ukraine. And um, we're still having a little bit of challenges trying to get the school structure um, in order for the student. Um, trying to, like I know Dr. Lawson said the last time he was here, get them schools where school fees are close to what they previously paid. And also, um, I, I had some observation based on our analysis and uh, our database. Uh, we did, um, based on our research, uh, we noticed that most of the Northerners in Nigeria was on scholarship compared to the Southerners and the Westerners and the Easterners which was quite interesting. And to have a country, Nigeria, where we complain that educational system and the North is not much, we, it's, it's, it's quite interesting to know that the Northern governors, most of them invest a lot in educational system in their people abroad. We have so many of them, when I call them and, and they're like, oh no, our governor is in charge, I'm like, wow. But you know, you have situations where they tell me the only help we need for you is to get us a new school and our governor is ready to take care of it. We're already on a scholarship. Like you have 50 of them, 100 of them on scholarship. So it's, it was quite an interesting observation this period. Uh, I don't know if that is a palatable news uh, or a, a saddening news. Um, trust me, because we're talking about a region where we have um, over 13 million children, out of school children, where we have um, 
uh, bedeviled by uh, banditry and the rest of them as we speak. So those are not very, very interesting uh, narrative coming from the north. I'm getting to hear that the governors are spending so, so much money in trying in giving us scholarship. Good one though, but one would have thought that it should have started from, from the home the front. Grassroot. From the home front. That would have been very key. But then, uh, more interesting to me is why you are here. Uh, because uh, and I, would want, I also want to know what you are doing uh, maybe with uh, the Diaspora Commission because that is a very key commission that you should be interfacing with in this um, uh, your alliance in trying to get Nigerians um, uh, out of um, the Quad Maya, Nigerians are abroad out of the Quad Maya to find themselves. Um, well, um, the diaspora, <laughs> quite interesting question to say. Um, I remember when we started this course, it was more of saying a lot about what the Nigerian government wasn't doing. And um, we got to... Uh, I got to a point, and now an organization got to a point and said, you know what, we should stop complaining and stop um, having to ask questions why and saying, if they don't reach out to us, then we are Nigerians, we could do what we have to do. Till now, we've not heard anything from them. And I, I personally, in my organization, we've said we would only do our best in what we can do because you only want to work with people who are ready to work with you. True. Mm. And you want to work with people who are willing to see your efforts. And if they don't see it, for us, it's a humanitarian service. So we are not asking for any applaud. We are not, we are not asking that uh, we be recognized by them. Because it seems we're practically doing their work for them mm. as an organization. Mm. And um, I, don't, I, don't, I cannot say, categorically say why or why certain things haven't been taken up. But um, I think as Nigerians, we know how our government works and we know how things are done. And um, we're also trying to work with the Ministry of Education and Foreign Affairs, which is our major focus now, mm. because they are the ones that we're able to discuss with these countries. You know, um, when war like this, we have what we call uh, martial law, where it only requires a government to interact with another government. Mm. Uh, persons cannot really have interactions with this government at this point in time. And so that's why we're also pleading to the Ministry of Foreign, uh, uh, Foreign Affairs yes. and Education to also be able to work with us. With, um, sent letters in to see how we could get an endorsement for them so we could work would be easy working with them and so also the em ambassadors some of them like uh, the German ambassador uh, of Nigeria to Germany um, he's he we're in good uh, conversation um, stages and um, so many other uh, ambassadors we're trying how to reach out to them how to come together and see okay this is the per amount of persons we have in your countries and uh, this is the help we need and my essence of coming to Nigeria is we were to visit some most of the state government governors uh, we are going to be having a fundraising soon which is going to happen in may um hopefully every day in nigeria for me it's just occupied and uh, we're going to see how to raise funds to assist the children um and also how to visit the governors and we have lists if i i had a very interesting event where i submitted the first submission of lists was 60 person or 50 persons to delta state and by the time, by last week, when I checked our database, we are having 120. Oh. And I'm like, where am I going to start from? I already submitted this list, and it's already in yeah, approval process. Interest. And everything is going on, and the Delta State government have been very um, helpful, yeah. very supportive. Uh, especially, we have uh, the diaspora, the SSA to the governor for diaspora, um, Dr. Uh, Modi, she has been an amazing woman, really concerned about these children, concerned about their welfare, fighting every day to make sure the funds come out for them in order to move forward. So um, at this point, we are trying to deal with um, state uh, diaspora persons, um, and we are open to anybody who is willing to reach out to their contact and say, I know this governor, I know this could be of help. We are just, we are open-hearted. It's for us, it's a community thing. We are one Nigeria. It's not separate Nigerians, you know. Um, like I have some of the Northern students come here and say, are you sure? And I'm like, see, there's no big deal about this. We're all Nigeria. It doesn't matter where you're from. At the end of the day, um, our job is to make sure everyone is safe. In as much as they went abroad to study, it's also a time for Nigeria education system to be restructured and mm -hmm. re-evaluated. I myself, I tell people, I said the only reason why I went outside of Nigeria to study is because they didn't have a good aviation structure, uh, educational system in Nigeria. And going back home, I always told myself I wanted to take what I had out there to bring back home. Mm -hmm. You know, I enjoy teaching. I'm a college professor and I say, well, if I have a chance of doing it back home, why not? Why? It's, for me, it's, it's a passion for it, just knowing that it's a generational 
uh, something that is going to be transiting and over generations. Yeah. Absolutely. Exactly. Uh, speaking of uh, Nigeria and uh, the reason why some of them wouldn't want uh, to come, uh, as at this time on uh, Wednesday, we, we, we got information and news that, you know, five of the 19 students who were trying to seek asylum in Poland were detained. And there were some chats between the government, uh, Nigeria's um, um, ambassador, and they asked over there. Could you give us an update on how far um, so far Yeah, there? see, that, that's the thing we always tell the students. I remember the last time you had a boy who said he was an immigration um, Office, office in yeah. uh, um, Germany. Yeah. After that day, the next day, they had two Nigerians who went there and uh, they got uh, deported. Their passport got stamped. And this is the reason. They got there and they were being rude. You don't go to another man's country and start being arrogant and rude. You do not, you do not, you plead. You are in a, in a desperate situation. For the fact that another Nigerian was given assets doesn't mean you be given assets. Man of approach matters. Um, and I'm saying this because. We, we all also reached out to the people and said noticing what is happening. And even we as Nigeria as an organization, in our WhatsApp chat, we notice a lot of craziness going on. You know, you, some students are saying, oh, why would you have to make us go through all this verification? Because we have step, seven steps of verification. So you cannot just come and say you're a student and you need money. It doesn't work that way. You know, and they're like, oh, why do I have to submit this? Why do I have to submit that? Um, this organization is politicalized. And we say, see, we do not have any ties with any um, um, political group sponsoring us. At the present, you know, if they're willing to come, why not? We're open to every Nigerian, every politician. But the truth is, their attitude, and I had to talk to most of the students and say, gratitude is very important. Man of approach is very important. You go outside Nigeria to school, and the Western world is not the same as Nigeria, where you think you could talk to anybody anyhow and feel you could get away with it. And so I think they asked the ladies, um, sorry, we can't give. Oh, no, you gave a Nigerian person. Why won't you give me? And they said, you have to leave. Oh, no, I'm not going anywhere. And the two ladies' passports were stamped. And when they called, I said, see, it's simple as this. Please, can you help us? We are in need. You know, I, I, we, this is, I, we can't go back home for now. If you give us this, we'll be able to go back home. It's simple. And in the, I, in the case of the Poland, we haven't gotten full details. So, but I know it also has to do with miscommunication. For example, I have two of my brothers who have moved to another part of Europe who were treated nicely. In fact, I remember the younger one telling me they had three times the police come in. And they said they didn't expect it. And they had situations where people just came acting as friends, communicating with them. Oh, so what happened? Where are you coming from? So, and for him, he said he just spoke, um, you know, openly. And he's like, oh, I feel so sad for you. He said, so what's your plan? He said, oh, um, I will try to go back to school here. Uh, um, during the summer, if I get my admission, I'll go back home, then come back for studies. And they said, okay. And the next thing the policeman said, I said, I want to see your document. And he said, I do not have this. And um, I think uh, one of my brothers didn't have his provoska. It's what we call, it's more like um, a student ID. Yeah. It's called a provoska. And he said, the younger one said, oh, he doesn't have it. And he explained and said, his school fees has been paid. Look at the letter for the school. You know, sometimes it's how you express yourself that matters because they expect any student who is studying abroad should be able to at least basic explanation, basic expression of their self or articulate properly to the next person. And so I think the tour time when the police officers came and they asked them, so well, how long do you guys think you could stay here? They explained to him, what's your plan? And they were good. And they gave them, I think they were staying in a yacht. And my younger brother was like, I haven't stayed in a yacht. I've been dreaming of <laughs> staying in a yacht. And I said to him, you are really living the life. At the end of the day, it seems you are having more fun than I myself that is doing the fight over here. So It's important. Um, character is also very key in all that we do. So blessing. Um, Give us your success stories in, in this, ah. in this um, attempt for, to make life better for Nigerians that were involved in this Ukraine-Russian war. Uh, there have been an, a lot, a lot that has been comforting, that has given me the strength to move on. Um, I myself, I would say it has been easy, it hasn't been. I've had even personal medical challenges and had to put my own personal ones aside. Even my business, in fact, two days ago, I noticed I um, had mails from clients and I haven't replied. I'm like, I'm missing money at the same time trying to pursue uh, this course. So we've had situation of uh, most of the families which we've helped to translate to other countries. Um, we'll have situation of students who had their passport issue, like the other last boys. We helped them with funds and they got their passports. Um, we have stories of how schools are responding positively. 
Um, we seen the last time the Bayasa State uh, student by the governor, the funds he sent, they were so overwhelmed. It helped them a long way and they were so happy. And I think next week they are having additional funds as well um, because we give them their funds every two weeks. <clears throat> so um, we also have situations where some of them who had health issues have been uh, dealt with and some of them who are also um, losing hope uh, most of the schools are in section, like we all know, they're doing online classes. Yeah. So we we'll always advise them, those of them who are in their final year, to continue and just graduate. Then um, we're also having um, some few individuals who are reaching out yeah. and saying, um, we want to take um, responsibilities of uh, certain um, uh, persons or we want to invest and we want to see how we could help. And... Um, and we have a lot of parents who, um, their children, their government, you know, and I speak to them and I explain to them the essence. Some of them don't want to come out to speak, but some of them are really pleased and excited that at least there is a group of Nigerians who truly care for their own. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Blessing for all you do. And I wish all the best to every one of the Nigerian students, uh, you know, who are trying as much as possible to get their feet back up, run away from danger and keep living uh, that the life that they want to live. So let's cross over to the virtual side of life. This time around, Elena White. Uh, she's based in London, uh, the United Kingdom, of course. She's FNA conflict resolution official and anti-domestic violence, uh, anti-sexual violence, especially in uh, war. Good morning, a blessing. Uh, sorry, and I said blessing because she's here. <laughs> Good morning, Eleanor. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us this morning. Hi, thank you for having me. Can you hear me? Yeah, absolutely. Loud and clear, we can hear you. Now, talk to us about the essence, because of course your title here shows that you know uh, you deal a lot in conflict resolution, anti-domestic violence, and anti-sexual you know, um, violent matters. The importance of taking this into consideration, especially how it affects the mental state of some of those people who have been exposed to violence. Um, well, an awful lot of people have been uh, experienced such an intense time of chaos in multiple different ways. Um, like they are a lot more at risk and vulnerable, including international students um, who are very uh, concerned about what is their legal status. Um, they can be dealing with kind of quite complex trauma quite quickly. Um, and potentially there's, yeah, that, that could put them at further at risk and um, being taken advantage of. Uh, but something kind of the mental health crisis from this war ongoing um for it should be very interesting to see how it develops um of course there's also the concern for trafficking as well um that's something kind of within every eu country um is trying to keep an eye on because it's something that i yeah europe has never the un-EU member states, EEA member states, have never really had such a, an issue kind of develop uh, right, unfold right in front of them. So yeah, this is a very interesting time that we're all in, to say the very least. Yeah, thank you, Eleanor. Uh, let's take it further. In your line of work, uh, uh, looking at the Ukraine-Russia Russia conflict, um, how have the figures been for you? Have you seen um, a rise in figures of uh, uh, some form of instability or war, uh, war, uh, war induced uh, uh, instability in your line of work? Um, well, I suppose within Britain, um, and because obviously Britain isn't part of the EU, They've had to develop their own um, visa system, and now this is just for Ukrainians. It doesn't extend to any third-party uh, citizens, um, which is quite unfair. But that uh, has put a lot of people at risk of tracking, um, of people who've been left waiting for these visas and didn't get them. There have, uh, yeah, there's a lot of people being put at targeted. Um, 
by various kind of different groups for exploitation, such as, uh, yeah, sexual exploitation, but of course, a domestic labor, um, kind of agricultural. Uh, so it's something, yeah, kind of, uh, we should all be definitely more able to keep an eye on because it's something that is going to develop. Um, and of course, this is also developing. Um, there's already kind of the established human trafficking networks, uh, but this could also create opportunity for new people to start getting involved with it, which um, should be very interesting to see how that develops. Thank you so much for that. But let me come back to Blessing and bring it local this time around. And um, we heard the story, story of Joan. Um, um, a few days back, um, who uh, was saved miraculously from the hands of human traffickers. And we had in Nigeria, and one of the northern states specifically, I don't know if it's Katrina or Kano back then, where one of the students, you know, a brother, a, a guy who was a doctor, who was studying medicine in one of the schools, you know, um, lost his life. Probably post-traumatic incidences. Um, do we have any updates on the Nigerian government or any organization helping to ensure these people go through this process and understand the value of securing their mental state because you know how the like, culture in Nigeria can, can be uh, where uh, you, you've gone through it so just move on with life so talk to us um, apart from the um, FSN aid for instructed Nigerian organization presently we do not know of any organization and um, yes um, his death was true was uh, caused by traumatic stress uh, and it's so interesting that he'd even go as much rigorous uh, issues that my brothers dealt with for two weeks. Um, we have some other few parents which we've talked, spoken to. Some their parents are even medical practitioners. And we ask them, did your child go for therapy after she came back? Oh, I was able to manage her. And I'm like, that's very important. Even as in the medical field, you know that therapy is very essential. And um, I think most of people who read psychology in school, I think now is the time to, for them to put their, their studies in, in work, you know, create a business, uh, create something, you know, come out there and render help because you'll be shocked at how so many people will be interested to go for therapy and to be able to understand, you know, uh, no Nigerians have this thing where we say, oh, I know I studied this course, I studied it's not valuable now, but it's how you make use of it. Someone has to start something. And I think that's why organization, we even reach out and say, volunteers and say, if you studied X, Y, Z in school, our organization is open for you to practice. We could place you under some other medical practitioners who have been there for years mm -hmm. and working and studying how this process go. Um, I, I will use myself as an example. When this whole war started, I never thought I would break down mentally at, at any point in time. I never imagined it. In fact, I when the show started, it was a side thing. I was laughing and one day it hit me hard. It was like, I just saw myself crying uncontrollably. I'm like, this is not normal. I just mm -hmm. weeping and just, it's like the flashback of you spent this, you did this. This is what is going on. How are you going to carry on? These are the attacks you're getting. These are the conflicts you're having to deal with your team members or the students. And, you know, so many people send you so many messages and being arrogant. And at that point, I said, I needed to talk to someone. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, I can't do this alone. This is not a job for one person. This is a job where everybody has to be together. And even as an organization, I try to... We try to plan and have everybody have their duties. Like Ella, we have situations where we have students who talk to her, interact with her. I, I can't do everything. So we have Dr. Lawson, who's in the medical field, Dr. Gladys, you know, we have educational consultants where we do division of labor, where the pressure is not on one person. Because sometimes you think you're so strong and you can carry it all mm -hmm. alone. Mm -hmm. You know, even for Silverbird, you know, you guys are also carrying a lot of uh, workload for us ourselves, having to put out the news out there. So uh, imagine a lot of students who I interact with, some of them, they lose control. You're talking to them one minute, they're saying one thing. The next minute you'll notice they switch to another and I'm like, mm -mm, something is not right. Sometimes I want to really get angry. And uh, Dr. Lawson will say, relax, uh, the, 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 they've gone through so much, you know. Some of them, they call all the access, I want money, I want money. It's not really necessarily I want money. What they are saying is I need attention, I need to be loved. I need someone to tell me to be okay. I need someone to tell me we'll exceed and we'll move over this phase. And so um, that, that's, those have been the major challenges we've had. You know, um, 
blessing, fantastic work you do, and um, I, I really don't envy you, trust me. <laughs> I really don't envy you mm. because I could imagine what I would have slumped into, maybe some form of depression and none of that. Um, because I really can't stand seeing people in pain. I can't stand people go through very terrible uh, situations. But then, like I would always say, thank you for what you do. And uh, we wish you all the very best as you continue. And then we also hope that your coming back home will be very fruitful. Uh, you would, um, you know, all that you, you probably get to meet all, all who you want to meet and get um, some positive response from them going forward. Bless it. Thank you. Thank you, too. It's a pleasure always being here. It's an amazing moment. I'm grateful to Silverbed, uh, Senator Ben Bruce, uh, every crew in this uh, uh, Silverbed organization. And from the cameraman to the <laughs> newsroom to everybody, including the cleaners, everybody has really, really, really been of great help, support mentally. You, you, every one of you have given us the drive. In fact, me personally, has given me the courage to move on. Uh, thanks to the director, uh, the manager of the show, Mr. Richard. I, I, see, it, it's been amazing. <laughs> it's been an amazing time. And I, I, words, words cannot say how much we appreciate you guys. All right, thank you so much, Blessing. But we still have Eleanor, who, who, uh, is, with, uh, who is with us virtually. Eleanor, um, speak to parents, students, everybody watching from different parts of the world, you know, about helping people like this in different, not just the Niger, not just the Russian-Ukraine crisis, and there are some parts of Africa where they have so much crisis, right? So speak to them as a professional about the essence of, you know, um, seeking help when needed, especially mentally, emotionally, um, when such issues are, are being dealt with. Um, well, I, there's never any shame in reaching out, just even looking for help. I even uh, if you're able to do that um, because uh, you know we're not humans aren't supposed to deal with like multiple crises and hugely traumatic events time and time again um, and particularly if you're in a war um, you're going to be seeing a lot or if you're in a civil conflict as well you're going to be seeing a lot you're going to be in a heightened sense of stress um, and that's going to affect you in multiple ways. Like I've also heard of from many people who have kind of uh, gotten out of Ukraine and now are in uh, kind of safe EU countries. Um, many of them have had like uh, pneumonia, uh, tooth infections, um, because of the amount of stress that their bodies have been through over the past few weeks. Um, so yeah, it, like obviously mental health plays a huge stress has uh, stress has the most symptoms of anything um so it's just being aware of yeah it will come out with you on your body as well as your mental health wise White, uh, thank you. Thank you for your time and thank you for what you do as well. We appreciate your time with us on the show this fantastic day. Do have a great day and bye for now. Blessing, thank you one more time. Thank you yeah. so much. Have a great day. Yeah. All right, we'll take a quick look and we'll come back to the show. We'll continue. Don't go away. It's still news up Thursday. Stay with us.